Hey guys, I'm Michael the Plugin Genius from Admix and today I'm going to be showing you how to instance a prefab during runtime with dynamic in-play banner ads. Great if you're making an endless runner or a roguelike. So let's go. The first thing you want to do is prepare the prefab using in-play ads that will be instanced. I'll be using a small city prefab following our previous tutorial. For this, you will need to make an empty game object and rename it small city or whatever you would like. Up to game object and we want to go down to create empty. And I was going to create an empty game object. And we want to rename this get empty game object small city. All you need to do is hold the shift button, select all of the assets within your scene, and then grab those and drag and drop that in the small object that you just made. Now in your admix prefab folder, drag and drop the small city prefab you just made from your hierarchy into that folder. We're making an imaginary endless runner. So I'm going to grab that small city prefab back into my scene and we want to move this small city prefab to the end of the road and then we want to rename this so we want to go to here and we want to rename this small city 2 and then we want to drag the small city 2 prefab into your pre admix prefabs folder for later and we want to select original prefab this will be instanced further down the line and then make sure you delete the small city 2 prefab from your scene now you will need to make another 3d object and this one will be placed at the end of the level or your scene a object 3d object cube it's a bit far away so we're just gonna move it back to our scene like so this will act as a collision detector for our master controller trigger make sure you turn off the mesh renderer and then add the rigid body and make sure is kinetic is turned on and then rename this cube next now we want to increase the size of the box so it can cover the area this will act as an invisible box so when the trigger box that's attached to our camera or player collides with it our master controller will spawn the small city 2 prefab let's go ahead now and create our master trigger box right click here and then co create 3d object cube and then we want to bring this one down up next to the player create a 3d object and turn off its mesh renderer and tick is trigger then move the box just so it's ahead and above the camera or the controller and then rename the box trigger and then you want to drag and drop the trigger box into your main camera or player this will be the master controller that will instant prefabs once the collision is triggered as this object's job is to control things we need to give it a little bit of code so let's create a small script to add to it so let's make a new folder called script so we want to go down to our assets and then we want to go to right click go up to create new folder and let's name it scripts let's keep those projects organized and create a c-sharp script inside of it do so you want to go to right click go up to create and then go create c-sharp i'm going to name this new scene as a placeholder but you can name it wherever you like we don't need this so let's delete everything from line 7 to 16. now this little code snippet sets the trigger to false so it's ready to detect a collision and it listens out for that collision when that collision happens it instantiates the next part of the map and sets the trigger to true so it doesn't spawn the prefab over and over you can find this snippet in our docs which will link below so just drag and drop the script onto the trigger box that's attached to the main camera or the player in that script you will see an empty box drag and drop the small city prefab 2 that you made into that slot now all you have to do is hit play and test when our player or camera hits the end of the road our small city 2 prefab should load and it should create an endless level more importantly your dynamic in play ads are loading at the same time so you're generating revenue from your game and there you have it a simple way to have a prefab load during runtime with in play dynamic banners within your scene thank you so much for watching this quick tutorial be sure to like and subscribe for more videos on tutorials game days and our very own podcast and much more and i'll catch you guys in the next one sweet